Hello, English 9. You should be currently in the Persuasive Appeals slideshow, as well as the Persuasive Appeals notes document and worksheet. You have just finished watching Romeo and Juliet, Act 3, in which you listened to a long monologue, which is a long speech by Friar Lawrence, explaining to Romeo why he should not kill himself. Friar Lawrence in that speech convinces Romeo not to kill himself uh, by using some persuasive appeals. You are going to analyze Friar Lawrence's speech for persuasive appeals, uh, but in order to do that, you have to know what persuasive appeals are. So you should have two things open. You should have this lesson that you're watching and your note sheet open. What I recommend you do is that you open it in a split screen. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So if you take your notes document, First, pull it down out of the tab that it's in, and then pull it to the right until it gives you that good sit, and it's going to fill half of the screen. Then you can take this presentation that you're watching right now, pull it down, pull it to the left. It's going to give you that ghost screen, release it, and you should see it over there. Then you can have your notes open and the presentation open at the same time. That way, as we're going through this presentation together, you can type in your answers to the notes and fill in the blanks that we go through together. So again, split screen your work so that way you can keep it all in one place. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about persuasive appeals. We're going to talk about um, how Friar Lawrence uses persuasive appeals. We're gonna talk about why people use persuasive appeals in general. And then by the end of this lesson, you will have completed this worksheet filled in your notes. You should have defined the appeals. And then the second half of this doc, you are going to start analyzing Friar Lawrence's text for persuasive appeals. Uh, just briefly, if these ideas are not clear as you're going through the worksheet, or if you need additional support, there are two videos linked in your notes document, linked one right here and a second video right here. There are lots of really strong lessons about persuasive appeals. Persuasive appeals are an old, old lesson. There are lots of people who have taught persuasive appeals before. If you are struggling with this subject, consider looking at one of those videos or finding another one and understanding persuasive appeals better. You will deal with persuasive appeals in all of your classes throughout the rest of your time at Seneca Valley High School and in high school in general. Persuasive appeals are a really important skill or um, important subject to understand. So to start, your friend has invited you to a party this Friday night. This is your do now. It's a hypothetical situation. We're gonna think about this first. There will be no adults at this party. You need to convince your mom to let you go without lying to her. What arguments will you use to convince her? So you don't have any index cards. If you do have index cards, you can write an argument on an index card. What I want you to do is think of three arguments that you would use to convince your mom to let you go to this party that has no adults at it without lying to her. So stop. You can pause the video and think. I want you to think of at least three arguments that you would use to convince your mom to let you go to this party. All right, so if I was going to let, if I was going to convince my mom to let me go to this party where there are no adults, I would use a few arguments. Hopefully you thought of at least one argument that would work on your mom. And you should have said it out loud, maybe to your stuffed animal next to you or to your little brother who's in the room with you or just to yourself. So one argument that I could use would be, I will be so happy if you let me go. Don't you love me, mom? You want me to be happy. I will be so happy if you let me go. Another argument that I might use, you can trust me. I've never broken any rules before. I know that there's no adults there, mom, but I've never broken any rules before. I've never tried anything that you don't want me to try. I've never done anything dangerous. I've never even stayed out later than you told me to stay out. You can trust me. And then the third one, if you let me go, I'll do all the chores for all of my siblings for a month. So these are the three arguments that I would use. Now, granted, none of these arguments would work on my mother, but this is a good hypothetical situation. Each of these arguments does something different. 
Each of these arguments appeals to something different in my mom to try to convince her to let me go. For instance, this first one, I will be so happy if you let me go. If you let me go, mom, I will be happy. Don't you want me to be happy? I'm your daughter. Don't you want me to be happy? This is appealing to my mom's emotion. This type of appeal is called pathos. Pathos appeals to emotion. This second one, you can trust me. I've never broken any rules before. This type of argument appeals to my credibility. You have probably heard this word before shortened down to just the, the word cred, like street cred. It's short for credibility. This is the argument appeal known as ethos. Ethos appeals to a person's credibility. Now our last argument, if you let me go, I'll do all the chores for my siblings for a month. This is the if this, then that argument. This appeals to my mother's sense of logic. If you do this, then I'll do that for you. This type of appeal is called logos. There are three types of persuasive appeals. Ethos, pathos, logos. People pronounce these different, differently all the time. Ethos, pathos, pathos, logos. Anyway, it's ethos, pathos, logos. The key thing is that each of them appeals to a different part of the person. Pathos appeals to a person's emotion. Ethos appeals to a person's sense of credibility. Credibility, another word for credibility is trustworthiness. You can trust me. Here, let me scroll this, move my whiteboard up, Tru trust. I could put it up here, trust. And logos appeals to a person's sense of logic. Logic how things go. So if this, then that. Um, logic has to do with how you understand the world, how you make sense of the world. So let me put sense making over here. Sense make, whatever. The key thing, logic appeals to your, your making sense of the world. If you do this, then I'll do that. Um, there's lots of different ways to describe logical decisions that people make. So these are the three appeals, pathos, ethos, logos. Now we're gonna dig into what these mean in a little bit more depth. I'm gonna go back to my slideshow. You should be in your notes document at the same time. Close my, here we go. So these are some arguments that I could use for my mother. Again, none of them would have worked, but it's always worth a try, right? So as you go through these slides, make sure that you're following along in the notes. I will pause to make sure that you have certain sections filled in as well. All right, so to start, the three uh, persuasive appeals. You can think of it this way. Pathos appeals to the heart. Logos appeals to the head. Ethos appeals to the cred. It's just a nice way to remember, heart, head, cred. Uh, and as we talked about, pathos appeals to your emotions, logos to your logic or your understanding of the world, ethos to your credibility or your trustworthiness. Uh, so the persuasive appeals, the definitions of persuasive appeals, the strategies used in effective persuasive writing and speaking. Uh, effective persuasive writing and speaking is also known as rhetoric. You will see this word again. It is an old Greek word and it has to do with persuasive writing and speaking. The purpose of using persuasive appeals. Why do we use persuasive appeals? We use them to get what we want to convince the specific target audience to agree with the speaker or writer's claims. You know your mom. You know that if you said to her, don't you love me, mom? I will be so happy. She's gonna laugh in your face because that appeal wouldn't work on your mom. So that's the key thing here, the specific target audience to agree with the speaker or writer's claims. Persuasive appeals have been around for a long time. One of the great ancient Greek philosophers, Aristotle, originated these ideas around 350 BCE or before the Common Era, before year one. So this guy, Aristotle, um, he was the one who established the appeals. It, he wasn't making them up. He was giving names to something that people already did. Humans have been persuading each other to do what they want them to do forever. 
the key thing is that Aristotle gave these three things words. He named them ethos, pathos, and logos. So the key thing, if these have been around forever, since literally ancient times, why do we keep using them? Because they work. Pathos, ethos, logos, these persuasive appeals, these persuasive techniques work. And that's why we keep using them. So again, just a reminder, pathos is emotion, logos is logic, ethos is credibility. Let's go to your notes document just to make sure that we've got all these sections filled in. The three persuasive appeals are, you should have filled in pathos, ethos, logos, they can go in any order. The purpose of using these appeals to persuade the target audience to do slash think slash believe what you want them to. Why do we still use these appeals? Because they work. They worked in 350 BCE, they work today. So definitions of these three appeals. I'm gonna go back to the slides. You should fill these in as we go through the slides. You can also copy and paste from the slides that I've attached as well. So persuasive appeals, we will start with pathos. Once the slide loads, pathos. So again, you should be on number four, defining the appeals. Pathos is an appeal to the audience's emotions or state of mind, such as fear, anger, sadness, or excitement. The author should make the audience feel some emotion, which will make them more likely to agree with the claim. So this is your definition right here. That should be in your document. An appeal to the audience's emotions or state of mind, such as fear, anger, sadness, or excitement. I'm gonna to pause to let you fill in that definition. If you did not fully fill in the definition, please open the slides and make sure that you get that definition down. Examples of pathos. These are all examples of pathos, but it's important to note which emotion each one evokes. So number one, we've had enough of these corrupt leaders. When somebody calls a leader corrupt, it appeals to the person's sense of justice or rightness, and it makes them angry, right? This second one, all of you have seen these ASPCA commercials before. You can hear the Sarah McLaughlin song in the background. In the arms of the angels, far away from here. Anyway, all of those <laughs> commercials are meant to make, to appeal to your emotions. They're meant to make you sad. They're meant to make you want to save these poor animals. These commercials are entirely about pathos. You can see this dog looks pathetic. As you can hear, pathos and pathetic are related. Both of those words start with the root path, P-A-T-H, which means feeling. Sympathy means with feeling, path. So again, pathos, feeling. And then last, we have a section from a, a poem. I know why the caged bird sing, sings. Even in literature, there is a pathos, there can be a persuasive appeal element in literature. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds wind soft through the sighing trees. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams, his shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. So all of these are examples of pathos. Second, logos. Logos, in your definition box, you should write right here this line, an appeal to the audience's sense of sound reasoning or logic. An appeal to the audience's sense of sound reasoning or logic. Again, type this definition in the box. Logos could provide statistics and facts, provide logical examples, encourage logical conclusions. Sometimes Logos can ask rhetorical questions because what it does is it makes the listener think of the logical answer themselves. So I'm gonna provide you some examples of Logos and I want you to think of which one does not fit this, um, this uh, few examples. But I'm gonna pause for a second, make sure you have this definition in your box. So right now in your persuasive appeals notes, you should have filled in the definition and the example of pathos. You can then pull one of the visuals from the slide. You can pull that, pers that um, ASPCA commercial if you want to. You should also have the definition of logos 
I'm going to provide you an example of Logos, and then you can pull a visual of Logos as well. You can also pull the visuals that I provided in the previous slide. These three visuals can also be helpful. You can copy and paste these from the slide if you want to, to get a, to get a reminder of what Pathos, Logos, and Ethos is all about. So examples of Logos. I'm going to show you an example of Logos, three examples of Logos, and I want you to identify which one is not an example of Logos, which one does not appeal to your sense of logic, your sense of clear understanding. Number one, students like class activities involving social media. In a poll of the ninth graders at SVHS, 95% of students responded that they enjoyed Dr. Brown's blog assignment. Example two, you're going to the party? Are you crazy? If you go to the party, then you will get in trouble. Number three, two out of three people say that they like Sensodyne toothpaste, so it's the best toothpaste out there. So you have three examples here, this first one uses statistics. This second one uses a rhetorical question. This third one is tricky. It looks like logos because we've got two out of three. We've got some statistics there. However, two out of three people say that they like Sensodyne toothpaste. Do we know who those two out of three people are? How do we know that this is the best toothpaste if it's just based on two out of three people say that they like it? Who are these people? Maybe they eat Sensodyne toothpaste for dinner. The key thing with logic, it has to be logical. It has to make sense. So whether it's a rhetorical question or a statistic, it has to appeal to your sense of sound understanding. So you can pull one of these and put it into your box of examples of logic. Again, you can copy and paste from the slides that I've provided as well. So that one is not an example of logos. Ethos. Ethos is the one that can be the most slippery, the hardest to understand for students. Ethos is an appeal to authority, credibility, or character. So the author must persuade the audience that they can be trusted. So it's, it's about building the author's credibility, the author's trustworthiness. They're persuading the audience that they can be trusted by showing that they have good sense, a good understanding of the topic, or good character. They have strong morals or are a good, trustworthy person. So the key thing, Katie, oh, sorry, my daughter's here. Uh, the key thing about ethos is that it has to do with whether or not the person can be trusted. All right. Sorry, fam. I had to get my sister, my uh, daughter out of the room. Okay. So the key thing about ethos, it's an appeal to the, to the credibility of the author. Can you trust this author? Can you trust this writer? So for instance, as you can see on the slide up here in the top right hand corner, it says nine out of 10 dentists recommend Sensodyne toothpaste. If you think about that in response, in comparison to this one right here, where it says two out of three people say that they like Sensodyne toothpaste, who cares if two out of three people say that they like it? Why would we care about two out of three people? But we care what nine out of 10 dentists recommend. The fact that it's dentists speaking about Sensodyne toothpaste changes it. We trust dentists to pick the right toothpaste. Key thing, the author or the writer must persuade the audience that they can be trusted. They're showing that they have good sense, a good understanding of the topic, they have good character. So in our first example from our do now, when I said, you can trust me, mom, I've never broken any rules before. I am building my mother's trust in my decision making. So that's ethos. Examples of ethos. One of these is not an example of ethos. Please determine which one it is. Number one, as a professor of economics at Princeton, I say we need tax reform. Number two, mom, I've never broken a promise before. I promise I won't drink at the party. You can trust me. Number three, as a well-respected singer, you should agree with me that schools need metal detectors. And number four, Shaquille O'Neal is holding a box of Icy Hot. Which one is not an example of ethos? Think. Say it out loud. The only example here that does not make sense as an example of ethos is number three. In the first example, you would trust that a professor of economics from Princeton would have something good to say about tax reform. This second one was our example from the party. 
obviously Shaq works out a lot. He's going to know what, what uh, Icy Hot is for. The only one that doesn't make sense is this third one. It looks like Ethos, but it's not. This well-respected singer has nothing to do with metal detectors. Therefore, this the fact that they're a well-respected singer does not build trust in their argument. So you have ethos, pathos, and logos filled in in your notes document. Again, you should have completed section four. The last thing that I want you to do before we move on to Friar Lawrence, which appeal makes the most sense to you or would work best to persuade you? So filling in this box, maybe you're like strongly an emotional person. So you would wrote pathos would appeal most to me because, and then you're going to describe why that emotional argument would appeal most to you. Ethos appeals most to me because I, and then tell us about why trust is so important to you. Uh, or lastly, logos appeals most to me because, and then explain to us why logic is the most important thing to you. Why does logic make most sense to you? Why is logic so important? Um, why would an emotional argument not work on you? So answer question five right now. All right, now that you've answered all of those, you are done with the first half of this document. If you missed something or you need to pull something from the slides, please do so, so that way you can fill in all of these blanks. You have to fill in the visual component. You can copy and paste an image from the slides in there. The second half of this document is practice. You're going to be evaluating examples of which appeal Friar Lawrence uses in his Act 3 speech, convincing Romeo not to kill himself. Ro remember that Romeo just killed Tybalt, Juliet's cousin. Just He killed Tybalt right after marrying Juliet, and Romeo thinks Juliet's going to hate me, and I love her so much, I might as well not be alive anymore. Then Friar Lawrence delivers a long monologue in which he explains why Romeo should not kill himself. He uses all three appeals in this monologue. So what you're going to do, and you've got an example of this right here. You've got the original text here on the left. You have the modern text here next. So this is a translation into modern English. And then you have the appeal that's being used right here. So you're going to identify the appeal, and then you're going to explain why that appeal makes the most sense. So, for example, with this first one, um, Friar Lawrence says, Art thou a man? Thy form cries out thou art. Thy tears are womanish. Thy wild acts denote the unreasonable fury of a beast. Unseemly woman and a seeming man, an ill-beseeming beast and seeming both. So then right here, this is the modern English translation. He says, what he's saying in modern English, are you a man? You look like a man, but your tears make you look like a woman. Your wild actions resemble the irrational fury of a beast. You're a shameful woman who looks like a man or else an ugly creature who's half man, half beast. Now, we're not going to dig into the uh, sexism that's clearly in here. The key thing is what appeal is this? What appeal is he using here? Is he using pathos, emotion? Is he using ethos, credibility or trust? Or is he using logos, logic? You're going to identify by highlighting your answer here. Then you're going to explain how it's being used, why you know that this is an example of ethos, pathos or logos. And then you're going to explain whether or not it works. Does it work to convince Romeo not to kill himself? So do that for the first one, do that for the second one, the third one, and that is the full thing. So you're looking through three chunks of the text. This is not the full monologue. You're looking through three chunks of text, identifying is this ethos, pathos, or logos, explaining how you know that it's ethos, pathos, or logos. So in this part where it says how it's being used, make sure you go back to your definition. I know that this is appealing to emotion because according to the definition of pathos, Make sure that you pull in your definition. And then you're going to explain how it works or does not work to prove Friar Lawrence's argument. Pay attention to the hints that Miss Williams has provided for you down here. They're going to be really helpful to make sure that you understand what the text is saying and what appeal is being used. Then the last part of the document, are these arguments helpful? 
does this argument work? What you're going to do, you're going to pick one of the previous appeals from the above. So you did three appeals and write whether you think this is a good or a bad argument to convince Romeo not to kill himself. So think about Romeo's character. Think about whether or not this will work. So you're going to choose one um, and then make sure that you get rid of the rest. So right here where it says the ethos, pathos, logos appeal from above is a good, bad argument. Please delete the words that you're not using. So maybe you're just going to stick with logos. Delete all the extra stuff. The logos appeal from above is a good argument. And then delete all that stuff so that way it cleans up. And then you're going to explain. How does it work? How does it not work? Do you think it's a good argument? Is it going to convince Romeo or not? When you are done with this document, that, that is your entire assignment for English class. So click submit and then turn it in. Thank you for paying attention to the lesson. I hope everything was clear. If you have questions or concerns or something needs to be re-explained, please log in to our, uh, our um, Zoom sessions. Remember, we have Zoom sessions every Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 1.45. Ms. Williams and I are here to help you. And good luck. Thanks, English 9.